Welcome back to Make Me A Fan. I'm the Jag. I'm Pete. And today we are continuing our stroll down memory lane watching some of the most underrated matches in the history of man according to a post that we found on Squared Circle. Circle. Yeah, Squared Circle. Circle. He said I found it yesterday. I think you found it. I don't know. Whatever. We found it and we're watching them to see if they're really that underrated because you know what? Right now, you're at home. You're safe and sound in your home. You are practicing social distancing and you need something to watch. So what I want you to do right now is open up a new tab. Take your butt to the WWE Network and find this match. Encyclopedia, what year was this? This was, uh, well, it's in your house. It's in your be, so you'll be able to go to the uh, retired shows. In okay. your house, number three. Numero tres, yes. And you're gonna find this match. Mm -hmm. And can you tell the people what match it is, Encyclopedia? Absolutely, it's Brett the Hitman Hart mm. versus Jean-Pierre Lafitte. Mm, which is a, a name, a, a gimmick that was a precursor to, uh, uh, what was his name in the, was that his name in the Quebecers yeah. as well? Mm -hmm. Okay, well his name nowadays is PCO. You can call him former Ring of Honor heavyweight champion of the world. The dude is older than dirt, but he's still doing the damn thing and he earned the Jags respect. So I have not seen this match. Ever. I remember the Quebecers. I remember them being good. You've seen it? Okay. Well, I saw it. I saw it when it aired. Okay. I don't remember seeing this match ever. And I remember the Quebecers, but I couldn't tell you PCO from my PC. So <laughs> I'm going to have to watch this sucker and give it a good critical view. And if you saw yesterday's episode, the Jack took notes. So I'm going to take notes again today and we'll come back. Talk about this gym, this underrated gym, if you will. So I need you to go ahead and control T, command T. Open up that new uh, uh, yeah. uh, tab or go to your fire stick or whatever your chosen device is. Turn on this freaking match because the encyclopedia and I are about to go watch this sucker right about now. So we just finished watching Jean-Pierre Lafitte. AKA PCO. Against Bret Hart and In Your House 3 and Encyclopedia. Yes, sir. What were your impressions of that match? Uh, it's definitely underrated in the sense of like, this is a, like I was telling you, is a stepping stone for Bret Hart to solidify him as being like that champion of the new generation. So like, we're just into these in your house pay-per-views. The first one, they gave a house away for free. Really? For the first person, yeah. $125,000 house in Orlando. Wow. Screened in, screened in uh, pool and everything. Wow, okay. So that was the first in your house. So this, these were the pay-per-views that were $20 a month. Mm, yes, I remember so they, they were they, cheaper. They, so they were gonna be two hour shows, mm -hmm. but they were jam packed. Yeah, and it was a jam packed match. I mean, look, when we were watching this thing, I said, mm -hmm. I don't know why this is on the underrated list, but as the match continued, you saw a lot of things that you probably didn't see a whole heck of a lot of back in 1995. Understood. PCO, who is kind of famous for, I don't know about reinventing himself, but bringing himself back from, uh, I don't want to say the extinction, the brink of extinction, okay? Mm -hmm. By doing a lot of things that a guy his age and his size probably shouldn't be doing. And as Jean-Pierre Lafitte, the, the pirate, <laughs> he was doing the same damn thing. We saw a tope con hilo, okay? We saw a um, uh, uh, freaking- and that, was a cra and that was a crash and burn. There, yes. there, there was nothing but him in the mat. He missed and he went- He went splat on the mat. Now now we're used to it as a PCO thing, but even yeah. then, we're like <laughs> looking back at this as 25 years ago, we're like, holy crap. It that's... was concrete and a mat about this big. So you just went eight feet to a flat back bump. PCO, you already have my respect, but you got even more now. 1995? Then he hit a um, uh, he hit a leg drop off the top rope. He hit a I don't know what to call that. Just a front flip, front flip senton. I don't know yeah, what to call yeah, it. Yeah, yes, I guess His, the so. cannonball is what yeah. it was called because he's a freaking pirate. I had no idea about this guy. I don't remember this gimmick. I don't remember anything about it. But I did make some notes. So before I get to my notes, does the encyclopedia have any Pete's points you want to talk about before I start rambling on about what I thought of this match? Uh, not really, other than this is the kind of stuff that solidified Bret Hart as the next generation champion, like yeah. I said before. This is really his legacy. Um, they did great storytelling that PCO started stealing uh, his sunglasses from yep. the fans, and then he eventually stole his jacket. And the stakes were that Bret Hart was gonna beat him and get his jacket back. And that's one of my notes. I said this should have been called the jacket match because that was the story, people. He's a pirate for some reason, and he steals things, right? So he stole the sunglasses, he stole Bret's jacket, he came to the ring wearing Bret's jacket. Now, the guy had on like those thigh-high pirate boots, which has so many jokes could be said about those thigh-high boots and his velvet pants, but it was an interesting look. I I, I don't know. Uh, yeah. I, there's a reason why this character didn't stick around as long 
as it probably should have or could have. But one of my notes I put was Vince on commentary. Oh boy. Son of a biscuit. Vince McMahon knows how to work the microphone. Oh yeah, you gotta remember that he's also doing the main storytelling, so that's why he was so dominant in oh, all yeah. that, because like, he knew the story he was telling. Oh, for sure, but the other thing I noticed too is I didn't know JR was on commentary until about halfway through the freaking match, because when Vince talks, you shut the hell up. And he was doing a hell of a lot of talking to the point where JR was given a, a, a backseat role. He wasn't in the backseat, he was in the third row of the station wagon, okay? JR was like, may I talk, sir? You know what I mean? Vince dominated that commentary, and he was good at it, don't get me wrong. Oh, for sure. But you could hear JR start to say something, and Vince would talk, and they're just like, <laughs> which I didn't know when I was a kid back in the day that Vince owned the whole damn thing. Right. I just thought he was a loudmouth dude on commentary. Now I recognize why everybody shuts the hell up when Vince is talking, because he's the guy that signs the checks. So that was interesting to me, hearing Vince on commentary again after so long. Um, a lot of kiddie jokes. You know, the promo right before the match, they, uh, Vince interviews Bret Hart, who says, uh, this guy thinks he's Captain Hook. Well, I'm Captain Crunch. I'm gonna crunch him. And I was like, holy mother of pearl, that was one of the cheesiest things I've ever heard in my life. But it made sense, I guess, for the time. The fans knew what was going on. The kids were excited. Hell, when you put them in the sharpshooter, the kids rushed the rail so they might get a high five from the hitman. So you play to your audience, right? 100%. And it worked. Absolutely. I mean, Vince is a billionaire for a reason. He knows what the hell he's doing, and even though Bret Hart should have had some kind of gold around his waist. The jacket, cool story, bro, but the man is, he's a star. I think they'll fix that very soon. In the in this timeline, he'll actually have the title, because remember, Shawn Michaels next at the next WrestleMania beats him mm. in the Iron Man match. Yeah, so. and I mean, let's keep it real, people, Bret Hart, we had that yeah, threat. Yeah, I was gonna say, but 95, 95 is totally Bret Hart's year, and he's gonna win the title, and it's gonna be great, and it's gonna be that great build for Shawn, so. Like, this is a great time to drop into that, but tomorrow's episode. Mm, yes, please tell me is, and the people. Is, it does have Shawn Michaels. Okay, Shawn Michaels versus? Jeff Jarrett. From In Your oh. House 2. Random. Okay, this list of underrated matches has been uh, pretty good so far. So, oh, yeah. if you enjoyed today's match, and I know they did. Oh, 100%, I You did. had to. So, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below. Ring the bell so you get notified of each and every new episode, whether it's a Jags Jabs, whether it's a nine o'clock, Pacific, 12 noon Eastern, regular freaking episode. Ring the bell so you're notified. Be sure to follow us at MakeMeFan316 and come back tomorrow for some Jeff Jarrett versus Shawn Michaels action. I, I, I'm excited. Hell yeah, we'll see you guys tomorrow.